We know a, a number of federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies are all working to answer these questions. It was state police who said they don't have any reason to believe there is an existing threat right now. But Jillian, investigators say this suspected gunman was positioned on a rooftop roughly 148 yards from the stage outside the security perimeter. We don't know the type of gun specifically used here, but given that distance and the trajectory there, what does it tell you about the potential weapon used here and the amount of expertise the shooter would have to have? So being about 150 yards away, one would assume it's a long rifle. Um, generally speaking, a firearm, a handgun is not going to have that kind of level of accuracy, nor would someone choose to shoot from that distance with just a simple handgun. Um, initial reports are telling us that the suspect did have a long rifle, potentially an AR-15, uh, as we saw um, former President Trump was shot somewhere in the ear. Other people on scene were shot. So that is telling you that the level of accuracy of the alleged shooter was not 100 percent. But there are so many things that go into shooting, especially from that type of distance. That's almost 600 feet. Um, there's weather variables that go into play, the wind speed, um, anything else, the humidity level. So we can assume right now that it was not an expert marksman. Um, the investigation is ongoing. I'm sure that local law enforcement working in conjunction with the federal agents are going to do a deep dive into this person's history and background, talk to neighbors, talk to friends, social media. Allegedly, he's 20. We would assume he has a social media footprint. Um, what was the motive behind this? Why did he do this? Um, they're going to talk to everyone that knew him, make sure that no one else is involved. Um, and then we're going to see this investigation unfold. Jillian, you were one of the first NYPD officers on the scene when Governor Andrew Cuomo, a Harry Gabby, was shot during the 2015 West Indian Parade in Brooklyn. So you have been there in some respect. What goes through your mind in those first few minutes responding to a scene like this? So when I was um, at the West Indian Day Parade, we were hoping for a very peaceful event um, that is not generally a politically driven or politically motivated event. Uh, the former government aide worked and lived in Brooklyn. Um, it was an unfortunate incident in which it was not, he was not the target at that time. It was just a firearm that went off. And unfortunately, that's what happened. But because of who he was and his political affiliation, you know, we had to mobilize rapidly. Um, and then it became a political event. We had you know, the mayor come and the police commissioner come and everyone else was there. And we had to secure the scene for multiple blocks because we wanted to make yeah. sure that was not politically motivated. So obviously a different circumstance, but you know what it's like to have to have that very swift response, especially when it comes to a very high profile, very public individual. In this case, one of the, the most high profile individuals in this country, a former president, current candidate.